So for patients at high risk who are not eligible for transplantation, we have now several drugs that help us to uh, take care of them. Uh, we have, of course, the JAK inhibitors. Currently in Europe, two of them are approved and available uh, commercially. Ruxolitinib, of course, that we know for more than 10 years now, and more recently, Fedratinib. So we have these two drugs that uh, help us to manage patients, especially take care of symptoms, constitutional symptoms, and splenomegaly. However, we also have some problems with patients with cytopenia because, of course, these two JAK inhibitors uh, inhibit JAK2, which is necessary to produce red cells and platelets. And often, when you start treatment with one of these drugs, you will decrease the level of hemoglobin, the level of platelets in our patients, uh, worsen anemia for those who are already anemic, uh, uh, starting the drug. So we have some still unmet needs for these patients. More uh, in the near future, we hope that we will have two other JAK inhibitors that may help us to manage these cytopenic patients. One of them is pacritinib, already approved in the United States, but not yet in Europe. And the other is momelotinib that has been shown in a recent study uh, called Momentum to induce interesting results in terms of symptoms and transfusion independency in patients who are anemic. So the interest of these two new JAK inhibitors is that in addition to JAK2, they target also another receptor, ACVR1, which is a receptor on hepatocyte that uh, plays a role in the metabolism of iron through the epsidin and blocking ACVR1 induces a reduction in epsidin level and then an iron available for erythropoiesis and improvement of anemia. And indeed, pacritinib and momelotinib have this target in addition to JAK2 and could be nice treatments for patients with cytopenia.